yoga is native vlan okay native vlan it's not much guys guys shall we so it's not much it's a very very small topic maximum say 2 3 minutes that's all so i have told you or i have taught you about what is this trunking protocol what trunking protocol is this yes sorry vlan uses information vlan information no nope. Uh, one, one what you guys were told right okay so again that was vtp we didn't discuss okay so what jaswant was told is vtp that is a different thing okay here let me tell you say if you have two switches like this s1 and s2 okay so what you told is almost so i hope that i've started recording yes so we have dynamic trunking protocols and suppose it is connected via trunk link okay so the thing is that yes we can wow nice t shirt so if it was in my hometown then <laughs> would i got like something from this okay <laughs> yes so coming back so uh yeah so suppose that s1 and s2 are connected using trunk links okay so now let me tell you whenever a frame comes to the switch whenever a frame comes to the switch and is passing through the trunk link and is supposed to pass through the trunk link this dynamic trunking protocol will add the vlan relevant information into that getting it so that the other switch will understand which vlan it belongs clear okay suppose this is vlan 10 suppose we have machines vlan 20 and vlan 10 here v20 and vlan 10 so vlan 10 should be communicating to another vlan 10 okay so the destination or whenever this is passed through the trunk link the trunk link will add some encapsulation to the frame okay and in that encapsulation they will have a they will have a vlan id and hence s2 can understand which vlan it belongs and it can forward it accordingly clear and just want what you have told us suppose okay just a moment guys okay so just want has told something like this say if you have four or five switches four or five switches are there okay so suppose you have 100 vlans suppose you have 100 vlans say vlan 1 vlan 2 vlan 3 vlan 4 like that we have 100 vlans suppose configuring the 100 vlans is really mess or it's like difficult for us right so we have to create vlan 1 or vlan 1 is by default there vlan 2 vlan 3 vlan 4 or in every switch it is difficult for that we will use a protocol called vtp vlan trunking protocol it is there in your textbook but very briefly you can read it okay so vtp if you configure you are able to configure vlan 10 suppose if you configure vlan 10 here then automatically all the switches will create vlan 10 that is what this one just told right so that is vtp that is something else it has modes no sir transparent mode range mode sir yes okay but it has some conditions also say it needs to be connected using trunk and yeah i told about vtp that time also i sure then if it was vtp then both would be seen okay vlan trunk protocol at that time if i have i have mentioned you about say transparent uh client or server modes then it would be seen now coming back guys so our concern was about dtp dynamic trunking protocols so dynamic trunking protocols will add the vlan information to the frame so that the receiving switch will understand to which uh interface it should be forwarded to or to which vlan it should be forwarded to and again let me tell you we got two protocols for that so the first protocol was isl and the second protocol was dot one q okay so we have studied about isl and dot one q and i suppose you remember that i hope you would remember that the dot one q is where that i'm going to discuss now the dot one q will add four bytes of information to the frame four bytes of information to the frame and in this four bytes 12 bits is reserved for vlan id i have taught you that 
Okay. And now coming, say, suppose you have implemented dot one queue here. Suppose you have a switch here, S1, another switch, S2. Say, suppose you have a machine here, VLAN 10. This is in VLAN 20. This is in VLAN 30. This is in VLAN 40. Or this is in VLAN 1, suppose. Again, we got machines here, VLAN 1, VLAN 30, VLAN 20, and VLAN 10. And suppose it is connected using trunk link and it is using the encapsulation dot one. Okay. Now, when VLAN 10 information is sent, suppose VLAN 10 is sending something. Okay. Then that frame will be tagged with ESL. Yes, it's not ISL, it's dot one Q now. Okay. So if you are using dot one Q, it will tag four bytes of information. So it will tag four bytes of information and it will have something. So the 12 bits of VLAN ID it will have, and in that it will be specified as VLAN 10. Okay. Now, if VLAN 20 is sending something, say this will be having the value 20. Okay. If VLAN 30 is sending something, it will be having 30. Getting it? Now, let me tell you. If VLAN 1 by default is sending something, if VLAN 1 is by default, say suppose VLAN 1 is sending something. Okay. Say, it will be tagging VLAN 1. What if it doesn't tag? What if it doesn't tag for a specific VLAN? For all the other VLANs, it is tagging. Okay. If it is not tagging for a specific VLAN also, the switch will be able to understand it, right? Say for every others, it's tagging. For VLAN 10, it's tagging. For VLAN 20 also, it's tagging. VLAN 30 also, it's tagging. If somebody untag is coming through the trunk link, if somebody untagged is coming through the trunk link, the switch will understand it belongs to VLAN 1. Getting it? Because the rest of them are tagged. Clear? Getting it, guys? Need response here? Yes, sir. Okay. Sure, no problem. So, let me just ISL take it. ISL also do tagging, sir. ISL will encapsulate it. ISL will do the encapsulation. Here, tagging because they will in, in between, they will be adding a four byte setup. Okay. Now, again, let me tell you, say, suppose, just an example. Say, suppose we have, say, I suppose that everybody is aware of the houses and all. Say, uh, in school and colleges, we might be familiar with the houses, right? Okay. White house might be there or blue house, orange house, red house or whatever it is. Or you will be put into certain groups for arts festival like that. You will be put into certain groups, right? So whoever is winning. So let me just take you an example there. Okay. Suppose we are having four groups, say red group or red house, then blue house, yellow house, and green house. Yes. Okay. So we have four houses here, red, blue, yellow, and green. Okay. Suppose we have 10 students here or suppose 12 students, 12 students are there. So the first three students, I am telling them, okay, you belong to red house. The first three students, the second th three students, I'm telling them, okay, you belong to blue house. The third three students, I'm telling them you belong to yellow house or say this house. I'm not telling anything to the last three students. I'm not telling anything to the last three students. Then what will they think? Obviously they, all the three, all the last three would be in the greenhouse right because they are left nobody else is left only they are left so everyone have or all the others have been told you are put into this group this group this group and so so if nobody say if somebody is told nothing about this okay if three students were told okay nothing i didn't tell anything so obviously they can, they can guess they belong to the greenhouse getting it so similarly say when VLAN 10 information is passed through the trunk link. Say the trunk or the switch one, the sending switch will be tagging some information to the frame. This is the frame and he will add certain tag. Okay. And tag will contain VLAN 10. VLAN 10. Okay. So that S2, whenever the S2 receives it, he'll forward it to VLAN 10 only. Okay. Similarly, VLAN 20 also it is tagged. VLAN 30 also it is tagged. VLAN 1, we didn't mention anything at all. Okay. Then the switches will understand. Okay. So all the untagged ones, 
or the untagged ones through the uh, or the through the trunk link will be vlan one information getting it yes coming to that one okay so by default vlan one is not tagged by default vlan one is not tagged okay now the vlan which is not tagged through the trunk link so it is vlan one information that is not tagged when passing through the trunk link and such a vlan is called native vlan such a vlan is called native vlan so native vlan is a vlan whose frames are not tagged while passing through the trunk link clear now by default i told you vlan one is the native vlan okay and those vlan information or those frames will not be tagged you can change the native vlan also you can change for a switch suppose for this trunk link for this trunk link or for this interface interface fast tnh 0 slash 1 which is a trunk link you can change the native vlan you have go to you need to go to that interface then type switch port trunk something some command is there okay so i suppose it's switch port trunk native uh something like that okay you can put the question mark and see so you can change the native vlan to vlan 10 or which, whichever vlan you want you can change it but the thing is that for both the ends it should be the same for both the ends it should be the same then only say if it is vlan 10 which is native vlan here and again if it is vlan 10 which is the native vlan here so whenever this machine is sending something to the other switch which is in vlan 10 then only it will be correctly forwarded clear guys Paka. that's the concept of native vlan okay and if you change the native vlan to vlan 10 obviously vlan 1 will be tagged so to change the native vlan let me take the packet tracer here only one, one VLAN can yes only one vlan can remain as the native VLAN. or else how will they identify the vlans so today we got only Binel and Vaishnav online. Yes, Nitin has come offline. Say, yep. Varun has joined, maybe because of work he has left. Okay. So let me take the packet tracer, guys. So here you can see the switch. Say, suppose I'm connecting something, say F0 slash 1 to 0 slash 1. Okay. So here, if I make this as a trunk link, it's a face zero slash one and i'll be telling switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q i don't think it will work here okay switch port trunk or switch port mode trunk here okay now when you uh, see the interface or when you want to check the trunk interfaces do show interfaces trunk you can see encapsulation is dot one q and native vlan is vlan one if you want to change the native vlan the command is like this switch port trunk native vlan one okay so this is the command to change native vlan yeah guys if you change it there will be a problem suppose this vlan 10 no i have changed it now to 10 now this changed to 10 clear now you can see an issue here native vlan mismatch why because I changed the native VLAN of first switch to VLAN 10, while the other is VLAN 1 here. Okay, for the down switch, say when you take the switch here, show interfaces trunk. You can see its native VLAN is 1. So that is the problem. So for a trunk link, both ends should be having the same native VLAN. Clear? Now, so that is the native VLAN. And again, one more thing, guys. Okay. So you can see the trunk interfaces using one more command. Show interfaces switch port. Show interfaces switch port is the command. So you can make that make it silent. Okay. So show interfaces switch port. Okay. If you check it, you can see many, many things. And FA0 slash 1 is trunk. FA0 slash 1 is trunk. And the encapsulation is dot 1Q. And like that, you can see. And the negotiation is on. 
and trunking native mode is okay vlan 1 is by default and now it is vlan 10 okay and private vlan we don't have to talk about that now okay. so this is how you will see the trunk interfaces so vlan information is passing to the trunk it will do things yes it will do that it's not vlan information is the frames frames when passing through the trunk link will tag it other than the only for vlan 10 frames huh? yeah i mean if it's a native vlan is vlan 10 say it will not be tagged the rest will be tagged clear that's the concept nothing else now so that was the pending portion okay so other pending portion so even let me search after that i'll tell. now now that we'll move on to another topic called ntp what is it ntp ntp network time protocol network time protocol nothing is there let me tell you so it's very 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 simple guys you only have two commands even for suppose say nowadays when you check your phone nowadays when you check your phone okay so everybody will be having the same time everyone will be having the same time suppose i am connected to geo or my service provider is geo say tiru service provider suppose it is airtel and venu service provider suppose it is uh vi like that you have multiple providers right so these providers will be syncing their info time will be syncing their time with some atomic clock might be you got some atomic clock which is the highest trustworthy time okay so you have some atomic clock and you will be syncing the geo or the providers will be syncing to the atomic clock and then your phone will be syncing to your service provider okay and maybe you will be syncing your watch suppose your watch is slow then you will be syncing your watch to this one getting it so just a moment guys yes so you can't sync yes that is why you can't change the time because it is synchronized okay so now so we have atomic clock which is the most trustworthy then we have yes maybe our provider service provider then we have our phone then we have our watch and we will be referring to the watch suppose you are not taken your mobile phone you will be referring your watch only for the time if somebody also ask we'll be telling from the watch only right so this is how the time is synced okay now let me again tell you for the network devices also the time needs to be synced why because we have many time critical configurations many time critical acl is there many time critical say vpn is there so many 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 time critical applications are there okay so and even suppose say logs log in case of any log so logs will be generated logs will be generated based on the time only okay so it is important that the network all the network devices should should sync each other yeah so what we are going to do is so again let me so this is the most trustworthy one so i'll be telling a value of zero here and it is again trustworthy but not as trustworthy as atomic clock it is the most trust trustworthiest okay now again you have a number here three four like that you have certain numbers this is called stratum number this is called stratum number okay so how much we can trust the that is the stratum number say if it's three and if it's one one will be the most trustworthy here yeah, guys and again so what we are going to do is we'll be having one ntp server will be there one ntp server okay to which we will be singing the time so these might be ntp clients ntp clients okay so we'll be singing to one ntp server and we will be getting the time so that everybody will be having the same time we can manually configure it we can exactly configure the same time right say it will be like varying at least microseconds or and say milliseconds it will be very okay so we need to synchronize the time so that is the relevance of synchronizing okay so one vtp sorry ntp server is there and 
NTP clients are there. So server will say the clients will sync with server and use the server's time. That's it. Shall we check it? Now, so suppose that this is the NTP server. We have a router, which is the NTP server. Okay. So let me just no say do show clock. The clock is something else, right? 1993. So first let me set the clock, guys. Clock set, you know it how to set the clock and all. 25, it's not 25, it was 11. 20, suppose it's 11.30. Okay. And zero, 00 time. And suppose the date is 25 uh, November 2021. Time zone and all, if you want, you can set it. I suppose you can set it, say in GUI and all, you can see the time zone and all. Okay. Maybe you can set the time zone. And uh, most probably that we'll be singing, we'll not be like a setting the time zone we'll be syncing it with other any other device that's the usual procedure yes say i have set the time okay so let me set 28 itself it's not okay so let me set 29 itself. so it's 29 if you say if you see the clock show clock here you can see 11 29 okay now this is the server suppose this is the server so let me make this as the server okay now to configure this as a server so let me just to make you understand let me just configure a name just a name so that you will understand this is the server ntp server okay now to configure it as a server i'll be going into the config mode and we'll we will be telling ntp master ntp master this is the command to specify themselves as the say ntp server clear now so Yes, and we can specify the value also. Suppose I'm specifying two, the clock. So the starter number is just two. Okay, now again, I can take another router here. Suppose I have connected it using some interfaces. Say, suppose that I'm using faster than it interface, faster than zero slash zero, and again, another faster than zero slash zero. And suppose that I'm giving an IP. So that for the communication, so the, you should be giving an IP address here. Suppose the IP address is here, interface FA0 slash 0. For the server, let it be IP address 10.0.0.1.255.255.255.0. And let me give no shut. Similarly, let me configure the client machine also. No interface FA0 slash 0 IP address. 10.0.0.2 suppose okay 255.255.255.0 and let me give you no shut as well so again let me just create the host name say ntp client so now you'll be configuring the ntp client to configure the ntp client you will be telling the ntp server's ip you will be telling the ntp server's ip you just need to tell the ntp server's ip and they will sync it Okay, it may take some time and afterwards it will sync. Let us just check. Say, I'll go to the config mode and we'll tell NTP server, NTP server and its IP address. So I'll be telling the IP address 10.0.0.1, which is the IP address of the, sorry, NTP server. Getting it? Guys, these are just miscellaneous stuff. I just want to say, you can read that uh, in the textbook as well. Okay, so just small, small stuff. Okay, now if I configure the NTP server, okay, like this. So after some time, it will get say now before that do show clock. When you take do show clock, it is showing 1993. 1993. After some time, if, if everything is working fine and all, it should be 2021. Getting it? What I have assigned it there. Okay, you should be getting that. Okay, yes. So that is manually given to the server only, right? We are manually, I have manually given to server only. In this case, it's like the atomic clock. Atomic clock. Suppose that this is the atomic clock. Okay. Now that this will be getting, yes, exactly. Okay. Now it may take some time, guys. 
may take some time. Nope, not yet. Yeah, now you can see, yes, the clock has changed. In the NDP client, it has automatically changed. It has automatically changed the value to say 11.37, say, or 37 means I have fast fast forwarded the time. That's right. Okay. So here in the packet tracer, you have a fast forward mechanism. So you you here you can see some fast forward mechanism is there. So that you can just keep the time. Okay. So that is why it, it is showing 37. So 11:37 and yes, the date is or the date is say Thursday November 25, 2021. This is how you will sync. And you have some commands as well. So commands as well. So NTP association. So NTP association. So you can see this client is synced to say 10.0.0.1, which is the reference. And okay. And this is the address of the server. Okay. And reference clock will not talk about that now. So this is the NTP server. He has synced with the NTP server 10.0.0.1 and has the time of this number 25, say 11, 30 something, whatever is the time it is. Clear guys. And let me again tell you one more command. So NTP. You can see the stratum number is three. The clock is synchronized and the stratum number is three. Because here I have given the straighten number as two. I have given the master. Say when I configure the master, I have given the straighten number two. Straighten number is two. So now if the time is given here, the straighten number will become three. Clear? Yeah. And again, you can read here. The straighten number is three and the reference clock is 10.001. And, 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 and clock offset that everything is, yes, this is the time, reference time. Clear, guys? This is it. Maybe in your textbook, some uh, small configuration might be telling, maybe with key and all. I really don't know whether you have it. You can check it. Clear? This is the NTP network time protocol to sync the clock, to synchronize the clock of the network devices. Now, that was uh, this one, NTP. And you have some theory portions here. Replay SNMP syslog. Okay. Just will be giving you some introduction and then you can read it because theory, it's, you don't have any configurations here. Syslog, let me tell you about syslog. Okay. So syslog, again, let me take the text here. See, whatever message that you are getting. So when you have ta previously taken the switch, you might have seen some messages, some error messages. Say it was like native VLAN mismatch, native VLAN mismatch. And these informations configured from console by the console or whatever the messages. Okay. The messages are called syslog messages or it is called system log messages. System log messages. It's just nothing but the messages shown in the router. Okay, suppose when you are configuring OSPF, you might have noticed there will be some notification coming like OSPF neighborship has formed. When the interface is up, you will be showing interface. Yes, you can see this as well. So the interface has become up. Line protocol is up and the protocol. So these are the messages. These are called syslog messages. Okay, you got seven syslog messages. You got seven. Say emergency, some syslog messages are there. I really don't remember that. Let me take... So, those syslog messages are predefined. Syslog messages are? Is that a predefined one? Like predefined one in the sense? Uh, if I don't notice these messages and they are inputted into something. Uh, I mean, let me tell you. So, there are many, many, many messages. Okay. Yes, obviously, they will be like uh, if. It is configured like this. If at all, some so we have some protocols mentioned in the routers. We have some, say, many, many things mentioned in the routers. If at all something happens, it needs to be notified like this. We would have already mentioned that. And 
with the significance of this uh, syslog message is that it can be the messages can be divided into various say categories okay then we will understand its importance say suppose you are getting a call you are getting a call say from some insurance company you are getting a call sir whether you want to take an insurance from our company or not what will you do it is not at all important i will be telling say hey hang up the phone i don't want to take it that, that's it right what if you are getting a call from your parents or your from your siblings you will be considering it as a high priority right yes they are calling me so it's my family so i need to take it so you will be going out of the class and you will be considering it as a priority call what about work you will be considering it as more priority right what if your boss calls so you will be say somebody will be like uh, they'll be see, right they'll be getting fear and they'll be like taking the call and they'll be they don't know whether it's for firing that we are they are calling us or not right so it will be considered so <laughs> so it's okay so we'll be just the uh, importance is that we can get to know how much important it is that's it and what the issue is what the problem so everybody so somebody might, might be calling at me to inform okay so tomorrow there is class or whatever so there are some informations some uh, numbers will be there this numbers are called mnemonics which will be say uh, signifying the importance how much relevant the messages are how much important the messages that's all okay now let me just i suppose it's in the next textbook i suppose okay and by default these syslog messages will be generated to the console this is the syslog message will be generated in the console not in vty or not so vty when you access i suppose that you have studied vty access and all right so when you uh, go for vty access and all we will not see these syslog messages because by default the syslog messages come in the console only clear and it can be saved to a device called syslog server everything all the lock messages can be saved to a device called syslog server you will have a server lock server or a server syslog server to which you will save all the messages getting it so suppose suppose that ganesh or say yeah ganesh or say suppose venu okay venu is misconfiguring something venu is misconfiguring something and suppose the entire network has gone down entire network has gone down okay so then the senior engineer can take a look at the logs so this will be saved in the syslog server and he can take a look at the logs and just the logs alone yes LD, no commands okay so this can be saved there clear guys so now let me just tell you so control f system message logging yes and logging console log model so these are the commands you can read these commands how to enable the say uh, console access uh, logs or say how to enable the vty you can go and say type logging monitor these commands and all this will enable the logging okay so you can type this and i want to show you mnemonic up down yeah this is the severity level okay it's not the mnemonic it's a severity level guys yes this is the yes these are the seven keywords okay these are seven keywords say you have emergency and alert key so this is having the numeral 0 and 1 this is having the numeral 0 and 1 so 0 means the highest prioritized message so at that time when the 0 and 1 messages are coming that means the device or the router is in severe say very 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 critical condition okay and it will be like you need to attend that now itself you need to say check it now itself and in case of critical error and warning it is impactful something is impact okay so critical is say a critical event or yes it is more impacting say this is this is a kind of medium impact and warning is a kind of lower impact suppose guys again let me tell you say if you if at all you are going into the knock engineer post you are going into the knock engineer post you will be monitoring all these things you will be monitoring all these things in the sense like whenever the syslog messages are created or some errors are happening or some trigger suppose r1 to r2 connection you will be keeping track of this connection you will be continuously pinging this okay continue it's not you that you will be pinging it's the router will be pinging continuously a router can be set with some sla service level agreement 
something like that which will be testing each and every time for every 10 minutes they will be testing the connection if at all the connection is going down so these messages will be generated and this message will be generated and also you will be say you will be singing this to a monitoring tool you will be singing this to a monitoring tool and the monitoring tool the knock engineers will be checking the monitoring tool and they can monitor in case of any errors okay so they can see these errors and all they can see the <coughs> severe impact errors say severe errors impactful errors normal errors so you guys will be checking the severe errors or maybe the critical errors or the errors and warnings and all you will not be checking it is like the usual one only or a small kind of uh, say notification kind of things okay now this is notification this is informational and the last is debugging these are seven informations all the seven messages syslog messages getting it guys and they got a number as well so five let me show you five here you can see the line protocol up or down link has changed so this is the new mode so this is the severity level and the mnemonic is this one it tells you what happened briefly it will tell you what happened up down means the interface has become from up to down or down to up okay so now this is the severity number so this is less severe which is the less severe and it is just the notification i suppose it's the yes it's just the notification just it will notify us that the link has went down that's all clear any doubts guys so this is the syslog or syslog message and i suppose you don't have anything here yes you can read this one what are the commands and all login console login monitor login back configuration conf oh you got some configuration as well okay say logging okay syslog configuration on r1 syslog console 7 monitor debug okay you can read this guys it's just configuring just by default it is already configured okay if you configure logging console 7 if you consider or if you configure logging console 7 all the seven messages will be displayed say if you can if you configure logging console 6 only six messages will be displayed i mean 0 1 2 3 4 5 up to 6 will be displayed okay and this logging buffered it will be buffered and the host it can be sent to a host also okay so these are setting you can just read it you can just go through it it's a simple one. okay and again show logging and all this is the show command those things and all its theory okay debug command log message so the same thing that we have discussed the same thing guys so the link change link protocol whatever it is yeah okay now that was the syslog message and you got something called snmp what is it snmp or it is called simple network management protocol simple network management protocol snmp okay now Yes, can you having doubt? So SNMP is to manage the devices. Is to manage the device. Say suppose we got R one and R two. Okay, so R one to R two. Suppose R one will be having say many many physical devices will be there. Okay, so suppose R one has got physical devices or physical say inside it. they have many physical components suppose fan fan is there okay suppose the fan is or the power supply it has failed fan or the power supply has failed so it should be notified it should be notified so it, it can be notified using snmp messages can be notified using snmp messages that so i have told you that we have some monitoring tool we have some monitoring tool and we can ask the router say suppose we are monitoring it okay so with snmp let me tell you with snmp you can use two things you can put the value you can put the value or you can write it you can write the value suppose suppose the fan say or the temperature suppose it's a very good example temperature say if the temperature is going above 40 or say suppose 30 degree 30 degree it should be notified okay so you are setting something or you are writing something that is called put message 
put or set. I suppose it's set message only, not put. It is called set message. You are setting some value. And suppose you want to check the values here, temperature values or whatever values is there, you want to check. Say so you are sending some get message. You are sending some get message. So get message is there, set message is there. And also one message is there. Say, okay, trap and inform. Trap and inform. Okay, See, same, same thing only. Tra but the thing is that trap messages will not have reliability. It means if a message is sent from one device to another, there's no confirmation that it has received it. But inform message will have that confirmation. Getting it? Yes, related to that only. Okay, but everything SNMP uses, I suppose, TCP. Okay, let me search it, guys. Say SNMP transport lab control. And I am not sure about the port numbers. SNMP port number. Simple network management, and I suppose it uses 160, 162 or something. And port number or protocol. Transport lab. Just a moment, guys. I really don't know. I'm getting some missed calls from the same number. So SNMP UDP or this. Yeah, we have our textbooks, right? Why to Google it? SNMP. We have some load balancing and all. Okay, you can read that. This will be load balancing. And SNMP. SNMP manager, SNMP, okay. Yes, get and set only. So this is the get and set only. And managing MIB, securing, we'll talk about that version. Okay. I suppose it's TCP only. It's not UDP, it's TCP only, I suppose. Okay. Let's confirm it, guys. Just go it and confirm it. Okay. Now, again, let me tell you, say, you have three versions. You have three versions of SNMP. SNMP V1, SNMP V2, and SNMP V3. Okay, so V2 has also got one alternative or not alternative one, another revised one, SNMP V2C. V2C, which utilize some password or kind of some community strings. Okay, which utilize some community strings. And SNMP V3 is having these things. Message integrity is there, authentication is there, encryption is there. So whatever values are sending, it should be encrypted. Nobody should be reading it. So it is encrypted. Authentication, they will authenticate. If the, say suppose, say a Vijay is the network engineer. So whatever Vijay is setting or Vijay is sending, it is the legitimate one. Okay, suppose Thiru. Thiru is setting something. That shouldn't be set, right? Thiru is, uh, say, Thiru is not the network engineer. So those values shouldn't be set. So authentication should be there. It should be authenticated. And also message integrity. Message integrity means it's just making sure whether something has changed or something. So everything is proper or not. Whatever. Say, suppose if router is sending something, the temperature is 30. Okay. It shouldn't be changed. It shouldn't be changed. So it should be received here as the correct one. So that is called message integrity. Okay, yeah, guys. Even you can go through these stuff. Nothing to discuss here. If you read it, it will be say clear for you. Then you got one more thing called what is it? Triple A. Triple A, let me tell you. Say for security guys, triple A, you will be working on this triple A, I suppose. Okay. Sorry? Yep. Triple A. No. Let me tell you. Triple A is not an encapsulation, guys. It's a device. Triple A is a server. Okay. So, yes, I suppose that. Uh, Monish sir might have told you, right? I suppose it's your batch that he has come and told. No, no worries. Okay. No, guys, nothing. Okay. Even I really don't remember what happens in one batch and all. So I'll be like going completely blank. Now, AAA means authentication, authorization, and accounting. Authentication, authorization, and accounting okay let me tell you about authentication authorization and accounting okay so this is a triple a is a server 
okay it is a service provided by machine and let me tell you this guy or this machine is responsible for authentication okay if you are trying to log into the router if you are trying to log into the router suppose you have set a console password you have set a console password the router or the console or the username and password you have set certain credentials so you will be giving say suppose ganesh ganesh is giving some password ganesh username is there and password is 123 of 1234 something so whenever you input the name ganesh and 1234 the router will be checking with triple a server the router will be checking with triple a server hey triple a server say you got router here you got say you are trying to console it okay so if you have configured the local username and password you might remember you might go into the console and you might tell say login local login local means while login try to check or check the local users only but here you will specify something else okay so then it will the router whenever this guy enters a username and password username and password the router will be checking the username and password in triple a server in triple a server so gene is 1 2 3 is there any hello triple a server is there anyone uh, say who is gene is and the having the password 1 2 3 it will check if it is there then triple a will send back the or the corresponding messages and if it is there it is accepted okay so that is authentication you are authenticating yourself or you are say typing your password and username and identifying yourself okay now you got authorization you got authorization let me tell you suppose i am the authorized guy to turn on the router here suppose we have a router here i am the authorized guy to turn on the router okay as students you are not authorized to turn on the router or turn on the ac as a faculty i am authorized to turn on the ac but as a student you are not supposed to say turn on the ac or you are not authorized to turn on the ac so it is the limit okay so say suppose i have been given with something or some permissions and i can do that you are not given certain permissions so it is the limit up to which you can perform the actions so sometimes you will be like a junior engineer where you will not be able to configure the things okay so you will be only allowed to go till privilege execution mode and you will only be able to execute whatever commands which is which is authorized to you getting it you will not be able to reload the device you are a junior engineer or you will not be able to configure anything even not even the hosting because only senior engineers most probably that the senior engineers will be able to configure that you can so you have some authorization so that is authorization getting it and accounting accounting means suppose so previously i have told say suppose venu has configured something so suppose venu has configured some uh, what do you say so whatever the configuration is okay he has configured something in say now it's 12 pm 12 pm 25th november 2021 it is configured by venu so this information it will be saved in the accounting part accounting is just recording whatever it's happening recording whatever it's happening so yes accounting say you will be given like this so in the log you will be having 12 12 o'clock 12 pm 25th november 2021 say the password was changed by and user when it will be there whatever you do it will be there in the account clear now you have two protocols to implement triple a you have two protocols to implement triple a one is called you might have heard of it or might not have one is called radius one is called radius radius and the other is called tacax or tacax plus whatever it is tacax terminal access control access control server clear guys getting it so just understand that you have some two protocols radius and tacax to implement triple a server okay i'm not going into those things because you will be studying these these things in the security okay no nope, nothing is that obviously you for configuration for configuring triple a you need uh, 
ACS or access control server. Okay, to configure those things. So that is replay. So this is completed. This is also completed. This is completed SSH, DAIs, DHCP, dumping, everything is completed. And also, I suppose the copy commands are also completed, or robot mode commands are also completed, right? Okay. And VPN is completed, side to side, remote access, everything. That's also theory. Okay. Now, the only thing left is QoS, traditional versus SDN, and wireless. Yes. Okay. So, QoS is a, so these two are theory topic. And wireless, it's theory plus one small configuration is there. It's a small one, GUI only. You'll be configuring that in GUI. Okay. So now let me tell you about QoS. Or do you want to take a break? Break. Okay. Then we'll take a break. So now it's 12 2. So we'll get back at later. Whatever the time you want, I'll take, give you. Because only, say, theory portion is pending. And tomorrow that I'll be taking the wireless. We don't have any other things. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Um, CCNO. So no, I mean we still have two or three more things. Okay. After that, CCNO. How much time is it? Time QoS might be that depends upon how much I take. I can take within say uh five minutes. I can take within 30 minutes, like that. How much time do you want me to take? Four, four minutes. Okay. Then no issues. I can take with four minutes. Then maybe I'll go with uh, these two. QoS, traditional versus SDN. Say maybe within maximum 20 minutes. That's all. Okay. Maximum 20 minutes will be there. And even traditional versus SDN also, let me tell you, we have you have four chapters which are theory. Okay. So do it as a task. Complete the theory portions. Okay, I'll be telling you the very basics, whatever it's required, just I'll be telling you and you can read the textbook. No, for no, for CCNP, CCNA is required, that's all. So if you're going for CC, the security, it's a good thing that you have uh, you to take the CS, that's it. Yeah, if you want, you can go for morning and evening or else you can go for, say, only morning or only one course at a time also you can go. It's not an issue. It's it's actually according to your convenience. If you are okay with uh, attending morning and evening, but at the same time, you should be able to understand everything. That's it. So uh, you can see that any batch. The problem is that even CCNA, CCNP, CCA also you can attend together, but you won't understand the things. Yes, that's it. So even CCNA, let me tell you, CCNA has the basics. Without knowing CCNA, you can't go to CCNP. Okay, that's the thing. Yes. Might be routing will be five weeks, I suppose. Five weeks and uh, switching also will be five weeks, four or five weeks. Okay. Usually it might be four or five weeks. That's it for routing and switching. Advanced, I hope it might be for four weeks. I presume. Enterprise, a CCIE enterprise. Nope. I don't. This will cover enterprise. Yeah. So routing and switching is there. I hope like you need to go for routing and switching. Then you will be going for this enterprise level. Sorry, not enterprise level, security level. Yeah. Yeah. Say so again, I need to again check it. I forgot. I have already checked with the uh, senior faculty. He had told me, but again, let me check it again. And at the same time, you can ask downstairs also. So guys, shall we start? It's already 12, 14. Yes. Venu is in the middle of some discussion, right? Venu just went was in the middle of one serious discussion. Sorry? Nothing is there. Full completed. Okay. Guys, shall we? Okay. You can configure that maybe later. Okay. Now, guys. So, we got QoS. QoS means quality of service. It means quality of service. I don't want to make it lengthy. So, let me make it shorter. So, QoS means quality of service. Okay. And now, let me tell you or let me start with traditional versus SDN now. First. Then we'll go with QoS because QoS, okay. So 
traditional versus stn is more important than qos okay so again let me tell you so far we have been studying about traditional networking what is it traditional networking in traditional network you will have suppose you have 100 routers say suppose sorry or 10 routers 10 routers are there so in each router you can divide the router into three parts or three planes you will call it so first is called data plane the second is called control plane or i can write it like this data plane control plane and management plane. you have three planes data plane control plane and management plane say data plane is responsible for sending the packets whenever the router receives a packet the router will say it will be receiving in l1 and it will be passed to l2 where it will be checking the destination mac whether it's matching the destination mac or not if it's matching it will consider it will accept it and strip off the layer 2 header and trailer and pass it to l3 where it will be checking the destination ip will be matching the routing table will be like sending through the respective interface clear and again while sending through the interface that again that packet will be encapsulated with newer l3 sorry l2 header and l2 trailer so these are the functions of data plane the packet handling here guys now for data plane to work effectively for data plane to work effectively control plane should be performing well control plane should be performing well let me tell you in between the data plane functions i have told you they would be checking the routing table they would be checking the routing table so routing table will be filled with suppose you are using a protocol ospf okay so ospf will be sending the ospf packets hello packets they'll be forming the neighborship they'll be keeping the top order table they'll be say having the selecting the best route and all right say then only you will have the values in the routing table clear yeah. so those things routing related or spanning tree related things those will come in control plane clear yeah, guys so only if the control planes works properly the data plane is able to send the data clear yeah. now we got one more plane called management plane management plane it is to manage the router it is to manage the router say suppose ssh you are ssh or you are using the telnet so these are you are you are really trying to get into the router so to access the router you can use telnet ssh and those functions will be or that will be responsible that those things will be taken care by the management plane clear so this is the traditional network for each router they will be having say management plane control plane and data plane clear now the new approach is that there is a new approach or it is called software defined networking what is it software defined networking or sdn software defined networking in sdn let me tell you in sdn say the routers will be having the data plane say suppose this r1 and this is r2 they will be having data plane so this is the data plane and this is the data plane okay and the control plane is not situated in the routers the control plane is not situated in the routers the control plane will be there in a server machine it will be there in a server machine and this controller so this is a centralized controller it will be common for all the routers here it is a centralized controller and it is called centralized control plane centralized control plane or it is called controller it's called control clear yeah, guys so we have a controller which will control everything and you can see the controller say it will be sending messages to data plane it will be sending messages to data plane so the controller will have certain programs the controller will have certain programs say suppose this is a program and the data plane will also have certain programs okay they'll have certain programs in it so they got some program 
and this program it will be communicating to each other and that is called api application programming interface you got apis so that they will communicate to each other say if at all they are using some say program say java suppose they are using some java okay so so you got some api here which will be responsible for their communication and let me tell you this is called say the controller to the data plane communication is called south bound interface it is called south bound interface or sbi it's not state bank of india it's south bound interface okay yes now say you have different controllers you might have heard of dnac or cisco dna center and this side is called api that side is called sorry say api api only okay for everything so this interface this connection is say they have some interacting connections right or interactions so that will be say will be responsible by the api or application programming interface okay connection is called yeah the connection is called the interaction is called sbi southbound interface and again you have one more thing here you have one more thing this is the application this is the application the developers right you might have heard developers the developers might be developing some applications the developers might be developing some applications and they also will be interacting with the control plane they'll be interacting with the control plane they also have got some application programming interface between them so that they will communicate each other and that also could be some language or some programs like java okay now this interaction is called nbi north bound interface this interaction is called north bound say we are picturing picturizing like this so that's why we are calling it as north bound interface application is normally uh, drawn above the control plane so that is why it is called north bound interface okay whereas to the south you have or to the downside or below the sec, uh, control plane you have data plane so that is why it is called southbound interface getting it now let me tell you so this is the northbound interface clear yeah. now again this application this application so we will be accessing this application okay we will be accessing this application and the application will be pushing our values into control plane and the control plane will process and will push the values or push those things into data plane okay so the thing is that you will develop some application through which you can say access the data plane or you will not directly access you will configure the control plane okay and the control plane will be distributing it to the data plane of the devices getting it so that nowadays we don't need to go to individual devices and configure we just need to say go into application and you need to consider these values getting it and again let me again tell you i'm not going into say too much guys i know it's theory boring and again let me tell you again say sdn cisco has come up with sdn sdn was researched and developed by say you got one team called onf open networking foundation they were responsible for the researching for the first research and all they the open networking foundation did it and they came up with uh, some architecture called i suppose it is um, open flow or something you can read the text they have mentioned it okay open flow or something they have mentioned it you can see it and cisco has also come up with something cisco has also come up with something cisco has come up with some something called aci application say this is the aci is the okay just before discussing aci let me again come with something else cisco has developed cisco research so cisco had researchers they what they did was they did separate researching for wan for lan or campus network and also for the data center they separately research for wan campus and data center for wan they came up with something called sd wan they came up with something called sd wan for lan or campus they came up with something called sda software defined access 
And for data center, they came up with something called ACI, I suppose, application centric infrastructure. Getting it. And this SDA uses the controller called DNAC, DNAC controller. Okay. For so this SDA, so SDA, ACI, and SD WAN, everyone will be using their own controllers, their own northbound interface, their own southbound interface. Getting it. For campus, this is DNAC or so the controller is DNAC or uh, Cisco uh, DNA Center, Digital Network Architecture, that is DNA. Okay, so I'm not going into in depth. You can read those things. What are the SBI? What are the NBI? You can read that. Okay, for this SDA and for ACA as well. For ACA also, they have mentioned it. Okay, and SD WAN also, I suppose they, have, they might have mentioned it. Okay, now coming to some more things. Say, in SD and all, you can implement automation. What you can do? You can implement automation. You can implement automation. Or you can automate those things. And again, let me tell you again another thing. When you go for automation, you have, say, devices can be configured in two ways. Or two types of management is there. One is called operational management. Operational management. So again, let me tell you. Say you got, you can manage the device say for configurations you can manage you need to configure the values into say ospf configuration or these type of configuration you need to manage so for that or else you can view the say these syslog messages or whatever it's there the router related things and all you can say you can get those values okay so that is operational and i suppose that is uh i don't remember the other one Okay, so there are two types of management. So first is operational management and the other, you can go through that and you will understand this. It's very simple only. And again, you will use some tools for this. You will use some tools for this. You will have Ansible, Puppet, and Chef. These are certain tools so that you will configure. You can configure these configurations in the router. Getting it? So I'm not going, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, I really don't know about this. Okay. I don't think it is. Okay. I need to check that. After checking it, I'll tell you. Now, again, you got one more thing, guys. And after this, I'll end it. Okay. I don't want to go with theory also. So the last thing you got, say, this is the northbound interaction, say, or the northbound interface. Just a moment. So you got application. Okay. And you also got, say, centralized control plane. Control plane. So this is the NBI, northbound interface. And again, let me tell you, say, suppose that this is R1, R2. This connected with FA0 slash 0. This also connected with FA0 slash 0. Suppose the bandwidth is 100 Mbps. So these values are relevant. These values are relevant for the application. Getting it? These values are relevant for the application. So this application will ask the control plane or we will, it will send some get messages. It will send some get messages to get these values. Okay. So these values will be stored as a table. If you, you are using the program Java, JavaScript or Java. Okay. So it will be, the table will be sent back. The table will be sent back. And the table will be sent back using something called JSON format. Some format will be there. J JavaScript object notification or XML format. Getting it. So this is the format in which he is sending back the table. And again, one more thing, winding up. So you got, you got get messages. You got some set messages or put messages. So you will be using the, or you will be accessing the control plane using certain HTTP messages, certain HTTP messages. And you have some HTTP message called get message, put message, I suppose change or something. Some messages are there. Okay. CRUD is there. So CRUD means the action. Get, get means you are really getting the values. Getting it, guys. So there are, you are using some messages there. Okay. For so that also you can read it. So, and the values are called. So, whatever actions they are taking, it's called CRUD. Okay. So, this is what? The NBI, Northbound Interface Interaction. Okay. I'm winding it up, guys. Okay. 
because i really don't want to go into those things because it's completely theory you can read i suppose we have last four chapters four or five chapters are related to this sdn and all you can read it okay and you got some cloud architectures as well cloud topics one small topic is that cloud so the cloud is telling again let me tell you about cloud say nowadays we are moving say yes we know i know it okay smile has gone from venus face right okay now so again suppose i'm running a company say i have i need to purchase 10 routers i need to purchase 10 routers now that i don't need to purchase 10 routers instead i can go for the cloud i can go for the cloud or storage suppose i need to purchase storage facility say now the cloud or the storage facility is, will be available in the cloud it means some company say suppose amazon amazon or some other cloud service company is there they will be providing us with a storage space or whatever is there they will be providing us okay so we have to connect to amazon we have to connect to amazon or we have to say uh, pay amazon to get these services okay they'll be uh, or they'll be charging many uh, say the us dollars or whatever it is they'll, they'll be charging for these things then you can utilize the machines present in the amazon's office which is in a distant location which is not within our premise which will be in a different location and that is why it is called cloud cloud it is not in our location it is located in some other location and that is why it is called cloud so the cloud provides many many services storage yeah yeah i mean they'll be uh, giving their own device whatever it's there so uh, that device amazon what which device they use i really don't know okay they use many servers sorry sorry it's synology okay might be using synology or might be using some other i really don't know that okay say so they might not be using cisco ics even uh, uh, where have you read that within synology on amazon space amazon only right then it will be very true so they will be utilizing those uh, synology devices okay so now coming back so you got amazon and you will be paying them for these services getting it that's the cloud and you can go through that as well so cloud you have one chapter where they'll be uh, discussing about virtualization as well so this is a virtualization you are really going with the cloud and again coming to the virtualization again you have a computer here you have a computer in this computer you can run a software called vmware you are running a software called vmware in the vmware you can run multiple machines here right suppose you can run um, windows server machine inside here windows server os you can run kali linux you can run maybe ubuntu maybe you can run router itself you are running router in the gnst right so running router so in a single machine itself you can run multiple virtual machines and that is called vm yes yes you have you will have a hypervisor in that you will be going with multiple virtual machines and that is called virtualization that's also so nowadays uh, real routers or real working in the real routers it's i mean working in virtualization is better than working in the real routers instead of buying uh, hardware we can yes definitely instead of the buying the hardware we can run this in the vm so that will be like cost saving right definitely it's cost saving okay so that's also one method clear guys that is cloud so that is what it is so you can read it shall we come to qos now qos the last topic okay or 2 minutes or 3 minutes rest you want no 2 3 minutes yes yes physical devices are not really now required but the initial connection should be there say suppose if you have the computer and if you have a switch say suppose storage okay i'm not going to confuse you suppose it's storage say the storage facility can be uh, will be there in amazon 
they'll be having multiple racks and all they'll have the storage facility instead of buying the storage facility in our computer say which will be having which will be uh, say having a very high cost say suppose 1000 it's not 1000 usd and all it will cost more many much more but still suppose it's 1000 you if you want to buy this device you will have to spend 1000 thousand usd instead you are just paying some amount maybe 50 usd or something to amazon they will be giving it as as a lease or something okay the storage itself, storage itself. The router, switches router switches also you can use it say in the cloud services. yes in the cloud say again you can run say you will be given certain devices in that device you can run the servers you can run the servers or devices whatever it's a vm you can run it so you can run the VM and you can run, say, if you want firewall or whatever device, you can run inside that and you can get it. That's the case here. Okay. okay. So you guys have taken a two minutes break, but I didn't take two minutes break. No problem. Okay. So now. So what is the Cisco company? Mm -hmm. The stocks crash and they close people. <laughs> I don't think their stock will crash in now. <laughs> in case it crashes, then... <laughs> yeah, because they will be like uh, the top, right? So it's not that they will crash immediately. It may not. We can hope. We hope it may not. So they do. Have you invested in Cisco? I mean, sorry, invested in Cisco? Yeah, in stock or something. Okay, out of curiosity, you asked. Yes. Shall we, guys? Almost the end, guys. The last QO is quality of service. I'm not gonna. Today hmm? is the last day. No, tomorrow we got the last day, which is wireless. We only got one thing wireless. Okay, after this, we got only wireless. So let me just tell you about, or shall I take QOS tomorrow? And I'm also feeling tomorrow. Then we'll go on with the QoS and wireless tomorrow, guys. So let me stop recording.